This year's Qualcomm Tech Summit just ended, and I would know because I was there. See, look, Hawaiian food, and yes, that's a digital version of the Tech Summit. Unfortunately, we were not able to go to Maui this time around, which was, of course, a huge bummer. That's 2020 for you. But there were a lot of things to take away from the announcement of the Snapdragon 888. Now, the name itself is a little bit different, but I think there are a lot of good reasons for that. So we're going to go through some of those right now after I let my thoughts marinate for like a day after the event. So it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Let's talk about some of my main takeaways after seeing the announcement of the Snapdragon 888. So 2020, this year, it's been all the rage to see processors get smaller and smaller and smaller, which is why you hear the term nanometer a lot. At the risk of talking about the competitors in these spaces, it's worth noting that we've seen this talk in the computing space even really recently. AMD made a splash with seven nanometer processors and gaming laptops, and then Apple has been on everyone's mind because of their five nanometer M1. So it shouldn't be taken for granted that an already small Snapdragon processor is getting even smaller by shedding a couple more nanometers. You see, the smaller the chip, the more efficient it will be with all of its tasks, which ultimately means that there's less power required for all of the goodness that's packed in. That will be a notion that you should keep in mind with all of the things that I'm about to talk about in this video. The fact that this is all possible on a chip that can give you even better battery life than we had before. Now I will take this moment to talk about 5G, which is still that sort of nebulous thing that most of us who live outside of the densely populated cities still can't fully enjoy. The important part here is that the 5G modem is actually on the chip, which is actually really impressive because of what we just talked about, the 5 nanometer processor size. And it can potentially make the entire system cheaper to have in a smartphone because phone companies don't have to buy the processor and the modem to achieve that 5G. So it's no longer a question of whether or not a high-end smartphone will Will support 5G because all Snapdragon 888 powered phones will have it inherently. So maybe in 2021 we no longer have to have all of this confusing and all of these weird naming conventions that put 5G at the end of basically everything. Now, there are a lot of deep dives that you can make on the actual spec sheet for the Snapdragon 888, but I'm just focusing on a few things that get me excited about 2021 flagships. Gaming is a huge part of the upgrade on the SD888, with some of the enhancements seeming to be a bit geared towards, like, competitive gaming. Qualcomm game Quick Touch comes to mind immediately, in which game and input responsiveness have been improved so that you don't have to worry about both your game lagging because of the performance gains, nor will you have to worry about your inputs because the input latency has been further reduced reduced. But one of the trends that we've seen pop up more and more in 2020 is about to get even more common, high refresh rate displays. Now, this is a big thing for gaming, sure, but it's also a benefit for the general user. I mean, just think about all of the different phones that have had higher refresh rates. They just feel smoother, and the high refresh rate is the icing on top of what should be a total optimization cake. Actually, in my personal tech life, I've gotten a feast of the senses with things like higher resolution and higher refresh rates due to things like 4K TVs and high refresh rate monitors like the one I have right in front of me here. And of course, you have the performance that supports those things like high-end PCs and, well, consoles. But it's also significant because these levels of high-end performance are coming on phones, the product that is in every hand and pocket. Sure, you have to go to the flagship level to enjoy some of these things, but those same people might not really be looking for like a 32-inch curved 1440p 144Hz monitor for their RTX-powered computer. They're never going to look for it in those products, but now they can get it in their phones. All right, let's talk about the cameras. The ISP, the image processor, is actually 3-in-1 this time around. Maybe that's one of the reasons why they tripled up on the 8s. At its very basic level, this means that there can be processors geared for each of the three main sensors that could be on any typical flagship smartphone. Things like the wide and the ultra wide, or a dedicated camera for video, or a zoom, or a telephoto, or anything like that. See, Qualcomm highlighted that this means that each camera lens or camera sensor can work independently, so there's less lag when going between the sensors when you're zooming, which is a practical thing to actually enjoy. But on a deeper level, this also means that all of the sensors can handle workloads simultaneously. Think of taking pictures or even recording video on all the focal lengths at the same damn time. And this is all on top of the other typical enhancements that we'll see in the spec sheets, like higher resolutions like 8K or higher frame rates like 4K 120. And these are all par for the course in each new ISP. Now, this is cool and all, and definitely something that they wanted to highlight, but I'm actually looking at these camera enhancements in a slightly different way. 
You see, the triple processors can either work in concert for three different sensors or pool all of that power together into one final result. That's a big deal because one of the enhancements that this can afford smartphone shooters is even better HDR, including in video. Yes, you heard that right, video HDR. This might not necessarily be a new thing, but it is exciting to see it in Androids because uh, having good high dynamic range in video is kind of the reason why most content creators have iPhones if they want to get good video from the thing that's in their pocket. But to know that 2021 flagships will have their own level of this high dynamic range video is super exciting because the hardware on Android flagships tends to go above and beyond. So let's say you have a manufacturer like Sony that wants to keep the hardware simple and then optimize the experience of shooting. Well, the Snapdragon 888 is actually able to inherently elevate those results. So now we're going to see a big increase across the board in camera quality, hopefully. I just brought up Sony and they are usually one of the culprits in this next thing I'm going to talk about. You see, the thing with these announcements from Qualcomm is that they make it very clear. These are all of the things that we can do with our chip. It's all there. 144 hertz refresh rate, triple ISP, HDR video, 5G, etc, etc. But it always is up to the phone manufacturers to flip those switches on all of the features that they would actually want their phones to have. It's hard to find a phone that literally does everything on this Snapdragon spec sheet because there's hardware and and software support to consider. Now, I would argue that like any year, that's going to make the landscape of smartphones very interesting because every phone can bring something different to the table depending on how they want to cater the power to the experience. And it's not a matter of one phone being able to do as much or more than the other. It's just a matter of how each phone represents itself. And right now, we're reaching a point where tech is so good that for the vast majority of people out there who might not care about having every single spec checked off, well, all of those things are trickling down to ensure that the experience is still going to be high-end and really awesome. So the last thing I wanted to mention is that we've seen the leap up to the 8s across the board. I mean, it's in the entire name, 888. And there's so much to dive into, but ultimately Qualcomm stuck to the top of the line processor for this year's tech summit. Last year when I did this video from Tokyo, huh. I said the more exciting announcement from that tech summit was actually the 765, the mid-range processor that still had high-end tendencies. Now, to go back to my previous point, it was a sign that we've really come so far in tech that many of the benefits that flagship users have can trickle down and many users can enjoy great smartphones for less money. Well, this year, we didn't get a 700 series announcement, but as I hold this LG Wing here, which I'm finally going to be doing some reviews on, I'm reminded that for most users who are not me, what we actually got in 2020 was still pretty damn great. Uh, sure, it would be awesome to see an update to the 765, and I'm sure we will eventually. But if you're still looking for a good time without having to smash open your piggy banks, it seems that Qualcomm is confident enough in platforms like the 765G to say, hey, you'll still be okay. And after what we've seen this year with phones like the Pixel 5, as another example, I'm inclined to agree. So at the very least, we can see how far the flagships are going to go and look forward to how much of that will come down to what might be called the Snapdragon 788 or the 777 if you're going to stick with the repeating number thing, I don't know. But whether high-end or mid-range, we're already doing pretty well right now. And Qualcomm just showed us how things can continue to get better. Let me know what you think of the Snapdragon 888. If you follow the Qualcomm Tech Summit, let me know what has you pretty hyped because these announcements are always giving us like the high level stuff, the best things that their phones can possibly do in the upcoming year. And then we get to see which manufacturers actually follow through with those. So a lot of manufacturers have already pledged that they're going to have their next flagships with the Snapdragon 888. Not a surprise there, but maybe we'll get some surprises when those phones actually make it into our hands. So look forward to all of that uh, by sticking here onto my channel, tuning in, and uh, subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Have those conversations in the comment sections down below or at the very least just drop some likes on this video. With all of that said, I'm going to call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, take care of yourselves and each other. We are nearing the end of 2020, so hopefully 2021 is as amazing as we are all hoping it to be. But until then, I would just remind you to enjoy your tea, everybody.